everyone. Welcome to episode seven of Birds of Geek. As ever, I'm Amy, and with me is Anthony. Hello. And Barry. G'day, Cobra. That was a rubbish Australian accent. Apologies. I feel like I should start this episode with a warning for people. Um, we're going to be reviewing a comic called Stand in Your Power by Rachel Smith. Um, it does deal with themes of depression and self-harm and all of the fun, like heavy stuff that, you know, is difficult. So it might be one that people might want to skip if you're struggling at the moment. But if you are struggling, please talk to someone. doesn't matter who. You can even tweet me and I'll talk to you. But just a disclaimer before we're going on. So there might be slightly less inappropriate humour for me this week. <laughs> And slightly more from slightly less, and slightly more from me because that's how I cope with it. And I'll be somewhere in the middle, (laughs) (laughs) just where you like to be, eh? (laughs) Yes, just where I live. (laughs) (laughs) So, as I said, we're reviewing Standing Your Power, which is a comic that I believe it's made up of. Did she do it as web strips originally? Yeah, yeah, it was web, web web series that she put out. Um which was, I mean, remarkably brave because it is, it is her story, you know. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, um, it's an incredible, yeah, uh, we'll get onto it in a minute, but yeah, it's an incredible thing, to be fair. So, it starts off with a breakup and it basically goes through her life post-breakup. One of the things I want to say, which has kind of taken a step back, I don't know if you've read, um, her one of Rachel's previous um, comics, which was Wired Up Wrong. No. Um, no, I, I remember you talked about it on Geek Syndicate, didn't you? With with Dave once, I think. Yeah, we talked about it, and we and I did a written review for the website. And so this is more re- sort of pointed to you, you two, and obviously other people. But um, if you got something from Stan Your Power, if you like to enjoy it, I would recommend um, you check out Wired Up Wrong because I, I think that was brilliant. And it's much in the same vein as this. It's sort of, or you know, that's, that's, it's that sort of autobiographical comic strips. But in many ways, it's, that's more dealing with her depression on a day-to-day basis generally as opposed to Stan Your Power, which is kind of dealing with it within a specific setting, i.e. her breakup. I think it's worth pointing out that Rachel, you know, this it's it's not the breakup that causes her initially. That's not like her, her starting no. point for suffering. It's it's a trigger for a bad period in her life that she then talks about. You know, I I, I mean I found it really relatable, not because I've had a bad breakup and stuff, but because I could see like a trigger that happened to me like recently when I went back on antidepressants and stuff. I mean Amy's been living with me through it and stuff um and, and me being a pain in the ass but how much of it just is relatable even as even as a guy and not having been through a breakup and having the same triggers i found so much in here that was just truthful you know that's the word truthful you know and, and, and i think and obviously i know rachel and <clears throat> we've interviewed her she's kind of done a panel with us and stuff and in one respect, it's quite difficult reading both of them, you know, and it's like someone you, you know and you kind of see just seeing what they're, go- they're going through. Um, and I said this about uh, Wired Up Wrong, and it's exactly the same as Daniel Pat. It's a very brave thing to do to kind of put yourself out there in that sort of a way, mm. uh, and it, which is different from, you know, as a creative person, just put, putting out a comic, but to kind of put out a comic which is, a, which is about your life and the struggles that you're having and it's a kind of no no holds barred uh look mm. at your life especially when you know a lot of the people that are going to be reading it are people that you know as well um it's in, i you know i think it's it's incredibly brave and and certainly i've never i've never been diagnosed with clinical depression but i've i've been on um any depressants i've been like antipsychotics you know after um a mum passed away and kind of after that happened, I, I, I still have have bouts. I don't know what you'd call them, you know. And I think I'm a bit like you, and I there was quite a few things in the comic which, you're right, I'm not going for a breakup, but I could 
associate with and go, yep, I, that's me. I've, I could see myself in a lot of those situations. Mm. Um, I almost feel like we're kind of jumping, jumping ahead of ourselves, but the way she's kind of chosen to sort of express it through comic, and even though she, <coughs> it's very emotional, goes to some very dark and uncomfortable places, and yet somehow... It's one of the few sort of comics that I read that I was sitting reading whilst she was watching TV. And she kept turning to me going like, will you stop laughing? Yeah, it it is yeah. very, yeah, very. I, I, I was reading at work and actually, I mean, I, I know this, this is kind of like a PDF of the print version we've got, but I've been reading it on my phone and it's the perfect size to sit there. So I've been like, and I've literally been sneaking off to the toilet at work to read a bit more. Yeah. Um, because I just wanted, as you say, there's just like those little, little pithy comments and those little little remarks that do they just make you chuckle you know despite the dark topic and the the raw honesty and truth of it there's there's that humor there um which i guess is rachel you know that's what she's like yeah i feel like i should say something but i'm just trying to work out how to get this because it it hit home quite heavily for me because it was going through a breakup that i was diagnosed with a lot of my depressive tendencies and the first time I went on pills. So a lot of the stuff about not not really eating and counting a pot noodle is actually being good and eating a meal really hit home for me. And a lot of, basically a lot of it hit home with me and how my depression manifests itself, especially the lying in bed, not doing anything, which as much as we joke, is kind of something that people think, oh, if you get up and do some exercise, it'll be fine. But it's it's the getting up that's the hardest part and the exhausting part. Um, So it's split up. Let's get back to the book. It's split up into different parts. You've got the aftermath, which is kind of directly after it rebuilding i'm just scrolling through to try and get it get make sure i'm getting all the parts living and that's it so it's three parts so aftermath rebuilding and living and the tone definitely does change and i think what's clear is it starts off with just a couple of black pages with like the keywords on it and then seeing it lighten up and it I really like after some pages at the bottom, you've got like the little comments. Yeah. Like the one where, um, where she cried, where she goes places I've cried about the breakup, Waterstones, at can walking down the canal, Heather's dinner party. And then at the bottom it says, I'm great at parties, which is made. It, it's those little comments that kind of just made me laugh. Cause it's like, yeah, that's kind of how you think. Yeah, like yeah. Looking, it's almost like the the comments underneath are the afterthoughts. So like the after the fact sort of thing. Looking back on it, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's almost like they're they're part of the catharsis and and yeah. sort of like once the healing process is initiated, I guess they're they're the kind of you, you can look back on things and and yeah, laugh about yourself and be self deprecating Yeah, but yeah, so I kind of related it to it a lot and. I particularly like the fact that she has all these friends around her who are trying to be supportive as she can. And it it was very easy to see which friend was which without getting like too bogged down on other characters. Mm. Yeah. I mean, speaking of other characters, and the, you'll see this when you um, read Wired Up Wrong, because there's a sort of continuing theme. So this almost feels like a well it is a sequel in many ways because it's, it's her life so it's her yeah. continuation of her life but the the main cast obviously you've got rachel then you've got rufus a cat mm-hmm. eight years old rachel's friend and housemate uh loving <laughs> loving sometimes a bit bitey and in, and what i love about that cat is that the cat's got a neck scarf um, <laughs> i've tried putting a neck scarf on both my cats steve and trevor and neither of them have had any of it so um <laughs> And then you've got Barky, which I keep reading as Barry, but it's not. It's <laughs> no, it's not. No, her black dog <laughs> is not called Barry. Which is her visualisation of mental health problems. But also the the black dog has has become a kind of 
poster icon for depression really anyway hasn't it yeah um and but if you read why that wrong those both of those characters feature heavily in that comic as well yeah so straight away when i kind of saw that i kind of knew the type you know what i was going to yeah. see if that makes sense and the the white dog i'd never seen before but the way she uses the interaction between the white dog and the black dog i think and there's one scene in particular which i won't say i i thought was brilliant uh yeah, yeah i think i know the one you mean i'm yeah. pretty sure i do yeah yeah and, and what i love about it is the fact that when because you've got like almost like the dramatis persona at the beginning so you've got like you know Rachel, Rufus, Barky, and it's like the white dog's just like, oh my god, who's this sort of thing? Because it's just unexpected, and it's it's that it is that unexpected kind of light that comes at some point during during de- depressive phases, I suppose you call them. What you know when, when you're in that pit, and sometimes you'll you'll have that, and it's like the visual visualization. Because I I was reading a book recently, and basically it's about getting over low self esteem, and it's using CBT. And one of the techniques that they talk about in there is, is visualizing the voice in your head, which is similar to, to Barky kind of thing. And I've got, I've got my version and Barky's Rachel's kind of thing. And so straight away, it was kind of like, oh, I know, yeah, I know what Barky is. Even without reading the description, it's like, I know, I know what that is, sort of thing. Yeah. And then, and then it's kind of like, yeah, it, it's just so much. And like, like Amy was saying, like about the whole food thing and the pot noodle being, being weird. I mean, I'm, I'm eating craply at the moment. I, when I when I have low phases, when I'm stressed, when I'm depressed, when I'm anxious, I my body shuts down. I stop eating. Essentially, it's like yeah, you know, I, I work through lunches. I, I don't have breakfast anyway. I work through lunches. I get home, and as Amy can tell you, I'll sometimes I'll I'll throw down a pot noodle type thing at the end of the evening because I know I've got to eat something. So you know, it's it's just things like that that you could, I could just see straight away. You know, that's I could see the connections, and because yeah. it's such a personal story, I think it is hard to not connect. Mm-hmm. And although obviously I've read this as someone who does suffer with with mental health issues and stuff, I act, actually think objectively this will be good for someone who doesn't or who maybe knows someone who does to yeah. read because it because it is such an honest insight into the kinds of thought processes you have. Cause, and everyone's a bit different with with these incidents and stuff, but it, it's hard to explain to people, especially when you are in a depressive state yourself it's hard to explain to people what it is and how you feel people think it's being sad and it's not being sad yeah you know, a lot of the time it's not being anything um you know and it and it is different for people and and i think this manages to get that over in as i keep, I keep saying but such an honest and fun yeah fun's the wrong word but do you know what i mean such an honest way with that humor thrown in kind of thing so yeah, it's 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 really good. It is, it is really good. The thing that I've always said, pretty much since the day we started Geek Syndicate, especially talking about comics, is this idea that comics is is just superheroes. You know, it's just capes and tights. Now, and I'm not knocking that because I love my superhero comics. But if there's one thing I know is that like comics can pretty much cover any genre and they do cover any genre yeah absolutely. and it, it's it's quite sad that the wider world doesn't know that because they're missing a trick mm. because this is a sort of comic that you could have therapists could recommend this comic yeah yeah you know um i said that about wired up wrong as well and i say that about this one you know this is a sort of so my wife sue's uh she's now a therapist um, like a child therapist she might kill me for saying that I don't know but uh, you know she wants to read this you know this is a sort of it, so this is what I mean it's not just it's got it's got such a wide range in appeal I, I think but yeah I mean it's hard to know what else to say because I don't want to go into it too much and, and you know spoil any of the key I mean plot points is the wrong word but any of the key um, events yeah that have, that have happened or anything but yeah as i say there's just so much that i can relate to or i've seen in other people and it's just as you say that bravery of getting getting all this stuff down and in such a public manner you know i mean as a web comic and then you know also compiling it and print you know getting getting a print version out there as well it's mm. just that's, that's an immense amount of bravery and one of the things i did want to did want to mention actually is there is a there's a section which is 11 pages or 11 sets of panels 
which are um, about self-harm. I was just about um, to mention that. Yeah, and it does say, you know, you, you might not want to read these, so skip forward to where the green pages stop. And it's not something that I've ever done myself. However, I didn't want to skip it. Do you know what I mean? And I, and I do find, you know, self-harm, and stuff, I do find it a little bit uncomfortable, but I have known people who have self-harmed and not really understood it. And this kind of, I don't know, again, just because it's so honest and so well presented, mm. it kind of, you know, that, that aspect of things clicked a little bit, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and, and I would say, I would say to people, yeah, it, it is a little bit, you know, it's a bit, bit more difficult ground, but if you can read those 11 pages, I think they're, they are 11 important pages. Mm. I found the self-harm things really, really nice to see because it's something that it often gets glossed over with depression and all that. And the idealing, uh, that idea that you deal with, you deal with depression and all of that in doing that. And then you have to make a choice to let the world see that. And I'm... I don't know it's because he lives with me, but when I get really anxious, I will start scratching myself. And it's it's almost like you can't control it and you can't explain it to anyone because they don't see it inside your head. So to see those pages there kind of made it better because it's like, yes, that is someone explaining it in the words that I can't. Mm. And that whole thing about being caught in this cycle is really, really untruthful. And what the big black dog says, sorry, everyone. What the big black dog says during it is exactly what you hear. And Mm. especially when... You get people and she goes about one, the panel, how she sat in the tables and everyone's saying how she's some inspirational figure for well-being. But she feels like a complete fraud um, because of what she's doing to herself. Um, yeah, I get that completely. And when she says about why she stopped harming, why she stopped self-harming, kind of works and it's truthful you know like going to therapy and talking to friends but most importantly and what she says is the big one is getting on antidepressants and too many people will say oh you just want to go on for a little bit and then get off them you don't want to be on them for any long periods of time but in my opinion that's bullshit if you need to be on pills to level out your chemicals in your brain do it because sometimes you won't need them for a long period of time. Sometimes you will need them for a long period of time. And I'm I'm very honest. I, I can be honest about this on here because if any of my students were listening, one, hi, two, they already know I'm on antidepressants because it's something I'm very open about because I don't see why I should hide that, mm. you know, um, and there is there is a huge stigma with antidepressants and the fact that oh doctors just shove put you on them straight away well yeah they do but sometimes to get you receptive to talking therapies and to get you receptive to everything you need those pills to kind of make your brain more pliable and to kind of beat down that black dog so you can get a lead on it mm. Yeah, I mean, for for me, I, I'm 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 like I'm open and honest about antidepressants. I mean, I, I talk to, we've got a, um, a university uh, guy. He's on, he's on the Sandwich Sandwich Way from university, and he's just started. And I, I said to him today because the subject of mental health came up. I can't remember why. And I said, you know, I'm I'm on antidepressants. I suffer from depression and anxiety. And he kind of looked at me and said, Are you being he's serious? So happy. Yeah, basically. And it's like, yeah, because at the moment, I've got. I'm on the tablets and they keep me level. And also one of my defense mechanisms is, especially at work, I be more, I try and be more funny, you know, and it's a lot of the times it falls flat, obviously, but I try and get those quips in and those jokes and, and be, be that guy kind of thing. It's kind of like that clown defense. Um, 
but going back to what you were saying about antidepressants and the stigma of them um and you know oh doctors just throw you on them straight away and it's like yeah and if you've got angina they throw you on tablets to sort that out straight away you know it's there there is no difference to having something wrong with your brain than there is to having something wrong with your heart or you know your kidneys or something and you need medication for it that's what um, I like about this book, though, is that she doesn't gloss over the pills and she actually she she basically makes a case about why the pills are helpful. Yes, absolutely. And, and it's important because, I mean, I'm, don't get me wrong, I am guilty. You know, you know this, Amy, you know, Barry, as well, because you've you've known me long enough. But I'm guilty of okay, yeah, I'm fine now. I'll come off the pills, you know, because it, cause even even as someone who is open and honest and who does, you know, know that you're diagnosed for a reason. Um there's still that part of me that's that kind of like macho is the wrong word, but it's that kind of like, oh, I, I don't need dogs. I, I mean, I broke my toe and never went to the doctor. Why am I on my depression? And, and I stopped. And it's stupid. I know it's stupid. I knew at the time it was stupid, but I can't, I've come, up, come off them too soon. And me- mental health, like a lot of other chronic, sorry, I'm, this has gone a bit off about the, co- about the <laughs> comment now, but I, I kind of feel these to things be are fair, and they need to be said. It's kind of like, you know, if it, if you've got something physically wrong with you and you're diagnosed pills and you're told you've got to be on these for the rest of your life, you don't argue with that. If you've got something wrong with your brain chemistry and you're told you need to be on pills and you should be on them for, you know, we'll have, we'll have a review in a year and see where we're at, but you'll probably be on them for a few years. Why is that any different? And I'm guilty of it. You know, I think, why am I on these blooming pills kind of thing? I don't need to be on them anymore. And, it, and it's wrong. But, but that's the kind of perception you have of, of mental health. And it, it is changing. And people talking about it and being more honest, and especially books like, like this, especially books like this, um, yeah. are a big help in that regard. I mean, I um, so after like after Mum died, and even though this now uh, seventeen years ago, um, I I don't know, I don't know if you'd call it a breakdown. I, I don't know, I don't know what the rationale is for that sort of stuff, but I mean. A lot of it I can't even remember. I do remember hallucinating a lot and having night terrors and panic attacks and um, all the rest of it. And and and, and Sue made me go to the doctors because I didn't want to go. Because and again, it wasn't a matter of I didn't like doctors anyway. But the whole kind of antidepressant stuff and all that sort of just in my neck of the woods, it just wasn't. It wasn't the done thing. He says yeah. in inverted commas, you know. And the doctor prescribed me, as I said, I think it was an 80%, I can't remember. And I remember the words that he used when I tried to explain to him what was going on. And uh, I think I didn't break down enough. And then he said, I'm going to describe this. He said, what they do is, he said, they'll just quiet, they'll just quiet your brain, they'll quiet your mind down. That's what he said. They'll just quiet things down so you can, you can think more clearly. Yeah. That's what I remember him saying. And I do remember at first being a, out of it because I've never really taken you know I've never really taken a lot of medication anyway and I can't remember how long I was prescribed them for but I didn't go the full term that much I do remember um I remember kind of deciding that I felt fine and decided that I was going to stop taking them um and it made a big thing of saying yep yeah, I was on them but I'm off now and I and I came off them before I was supposed to i.e. are I brave yeah I, and, I, I, I yeah I know exactly what you mean and it was the worst you know at the time I mean I'm not on them now but at, at the time it was the worst thing that I could have done because I wasn't okay and quite soon after that I just spiraled had I'd read something like this at the time and I mean this quite genuinely this and Rachel's uh, previous story because I'm a comic reader and I love comics and to be honest a lot of these types of stories are done in self-help book form but they just don't work for me in that way some of them are good but for me reading something like this it was like it just hit me and it was straight to the point uh, and like you said it had that kind of humor in there as well so that sort of lightened the almost like a case of like you know a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down do you know what i mean and it was someone's life and it was raw and it was in the comic format and i could relate to it and it was you know easy to follow and to understand and there wasn't loads of like scientific gobbledygook about kind of brain chemistry and stuff like do you know what i mean it was just it was honest 
it yeah. was just honest. And if I'd if I'd had comics like that, um, like if I'd gone to the dots and he said, right, I'm going to put you in antidepressants before you say anything, you know, I want you to, I'm also going to prescribe you, you know, um, wired up wrong and send your power to read because they'll give you a, an idea of what it's like. That would have helped me a great deal. I think that's the best thing that I can say in terms of how much I love this comic. Yeah. Mm. Definitely. And the art was great. I mean, it's a comic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose, we, I suppose we should talk you know, about that a little bit, shouldn't we? <laughs> but what's, cle- what's really good, clever about the art, I think, is it, it would be easy for this not to work with that kind of art. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you almost expect the art to be, because I'm actually reading another comic on Mental Health, and the art is, which I'm going to send to you guys so we could talk about another episode, but the art is completely the other end of the spectrum, you know. And in many ways, that's more the art I think people, if you said to people, I've got a comic which is about someone's, you know, um, journey with mental health and her kind of battles and, and triumphs and stuff, I think automatically in their head, they would expect to see a particular type of art, mm. you know, very, very bleak, very detailed, either washed out colours or no colour. And Rachel's like, F that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there yeah, is colour. And it, and, it, and it works, you know, it just works. Yeah. And, it, and part, part of the reason it works is because of the, because of the humour. Um, yeah. You know, the, those elements, they, they really lift it. And, and the other thing that... that it, you know, it's, it's a webcomic and it's laid out like a webcomic because it's webcomic, mm-hmm. but that helps it even yeah. as, even as in a printed form. Uh, you know, I, I would quite happily buy this and have it on the shelf because because it's like it's it's the square pages as well kind of thing, which is which is maintained for the printed version based on the look of the PDF. You know, every page is like the square yeah. panels and stuff. It becomes almost like a like the kind of thing you you would see at a doctor's surgery or a therapist's lounge that you could pick up and yes. flick through. Yeah, I mean, I would encourage any therapists and doctors who are listening to try and get hold of a copy um, for that reason, you know, or a few copies for that reason, because it, I, d- I don't know, there's something about it that I think just helps it because of the format. Mm. I, don't, I, I don't really know quite what I'm trying to say, but that that's, yeah, that's what I'm... Because of the way she's done panels, kept it simple, makes it easy to follow, it also means you can, because there is this thing within comics... If you read comics, you know how to read comics. And I always remember why when I gave her a comic and she said, how, how do I read this? Mm. You know, and if you give someone the wrong comic, that will put them off comics for life because... Yeah, don't give them know, a Watchmen. <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? Whereas this, I gave her a couple of... I gave it to her so she could read a couple of pages and she kind of read them straight away. Oh, I really like, you know, I really like the look of this. And she was able to follow it very clearly. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, and in terms of the art, like I said, even though it's got that kind of cartoony, bright colours, the kind of emotion that she put in her face and her sort of friend's face and stuff, you know what she's going through. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's the art really works well. And I think I think because it's kind of reminds me of like almost um, comic strip art from newspapers so th- with the square panels and the way that they're laid out, it means that it is very accessible for people who aren't avid comic book readers and who understand about panels and stuff like that. Um, something that it sounds like I differently to you, Anne, is when I, because I read it on a screen, I I read it two pages side by side, so almost okay. like I was looking at a book. And there's some there's some two pages spreads that work in my opinion, probably better because there's the pages about recovery mm. um, where it's like tidying up your space, paying your bills, answering the phone like a gosh damn adult. And then there's <laughs> also recovery, which takes the whole of the next page. So it's some pages I feel worked better as two. And so it's probably one that we will get in print. I was thinking it reminds me a lot of Cancer Vixen which I don't know if you two ever read, but it was one of the first thing the, the original Birds of Geek ever reviewed, um, which was about one woman's story 
when she gets diagnosed with breast cancer. Oh, okay. So cancer virtue, it's Marissa. I I can't pronounce her name. Um, we'll get Ant to link it in the doobly doo. Um, but yeah, it's a cancer fix, and you can borrow it next time you come up, Barry. Cool. Because we've got a copy. Um, but yeah, it's about one woman's story of just getting through and surviving breast cancer. Um, and it reminded me of a lot of reading that. The art style is a lot more developed than that, but we are going back to like 10 years ago when Cancer Vixen came out. It is, but it is along those same lines of those stories that anyone can pick up and actually get something from. Yeah. But yeah, so I did like it and it did, it did remind me a lot of that. Well, I was going to say, I think we've, pretty much covered everything and we've been i mean it should go to show you know how much we love this comic by the fact that actually we've been talking about it way over our normal time yeah and i feel like now we can't really talk about any other comics because i feel it's a it would be like a massive tonal shift yeah (laughs) yeah no yeah i I, yeah i i was thinking similar to be honest It's, it's, it's difficult to follow it <laughs> yes, we might have to do the, do this do this again. I quite like having a, a one episode just to look at one comic in depth like this. Yeah, I will finish up by just because at the back she's got useful numbers and websites. So I'm just gonna say a few places that people can Google. So if you have felt upset or if you felt oh this sounds like me, maybe I need help. You don't have to go straight to your GP and get the drugs. There is the Samaritans, there's Mind, there's Calm, which is mental health for men, Papyrus, which is mental health for under 35s, Childline. So if there is anyone under 19, Childline doesn't even show up on a phone bill. So it's a really useful resource for you. And then there's Silverline, which is for older people. Um, So please, if you're feeling in any way distressed, and you don't want to reach out to someone who's around you because that's the hardest thing, contact someone and then they can help you, even if it's just listening to you. No one's going to section you. No one's going to say that you're a terrible person or you're broken. They're just going to want to help you and help you find yourself again. And I'll put all those links in the show notes as well. Cheers. Cool. Okay. Okay. So look after yourself and each other, everyone, and we'll see you again soon. Bye, all. See you next time. We will will be fun again, honest. Bye. Bye.